do what the business is. It is another week in the books with the On Deck TV show. I am Spike Lou. Man, holla at your boy Animal Brown, Animal underscore Brown, if you're looking for me on socials. Absolutely, AB, and I am Spike Lou on them same social sites. Holla at your boy, boy. How you feeling out there? Man, feeling good, feeling great. Listen, 75 miles ran in the month mm. of September. I didn't think I had it in me. I didn't think my knees had it in them, mm. Pause. I didn't think my feet had it in them. <laughs> hey, but we made nigga we made it there will not nah, be another milestone, milestone after that though, though. i'm gonna chill you ain't doing 75 again i ain't i ain't doing 100 my folks tried to get me to do 100 i'm like nah mm, relax 25 a week yeah relax i love it 75 <laughs> i see you my nigga i think i made it to like 20 or some shit like that but i'm just starting shit, that's man, cooking so. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be up there with you one day, man. You're motivating me. I I love to see you out there. Let's get How was it. everything else this weekend? You can't call it, man. Slow motion, Billy Ocean. My Packers took a, a slight L. Other than that, though, thumbs mm. up. NBA season from the start. My Pistons playoff bound. I heard the Pistons gonna go zero and eighty two. You crazy as fuck? Seventy two and ten at worst. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> uh, I got to go to Chicago this weekend. First time in the city. Shout out to Chi Town. It is. Mm. Definitely hoodie weather in Chicago right now. Oh, I, I believe that. Fuck with it. I see why they, this is my first time there. I see why they call it the Windy City. Um, <laughs> city you is put the shicey huge. on too? <laughs> I should have. I should have walked been walking around with the shicey on. I, they do a real good job of keeping the city segregated though. Like I don't, I didn't see no shicey. I was downtown. So like I okay. didn't see no shicey mask. No switches, <laughs> no Glocks with the dicks. No Dracos. <laughs> yeah, none of that. I, I was good. I was happy in my old man bag where I was at. But I enjoy Chicago, man. It's a beautiful, beautiful city. I thought people would exaggerate when they said that. And I'm surprised how clean it is to be such a big city. Mm. Like, it's cleaner even than Atlanta. Like, the alleys was clean, nigga. Them alleys, you look like you can walk up those alleys in Chicago. New York, nigga, you go down the wrong alley. Oh, you ain't no. making it out to the other side. No, like, sure. either a rat gonna get you or Tough. somebody working in the alley gonna Ninja get you. Ninja Turtle gonna jump man, out into something, something. Something's going to jump out on you. But, yeah, I, I, I dug Chicago, man. It was a dope city. I wouldn't go any later than this. This was about as much hawk as I could take. Yeah, so, I yeah. see that. I went. I, I, shout out to Chicago. I went a couple of years ago. Shout out to my guy Derb M Extra. We went to Complex Con. Fun fact: mm -hmm. uh, Inside Complex Con, uh, West Side Gun. This was right before Griselda took off. West Side Gun was just in there walking around like a normal ass nigga. This shit was pretty. It was very funny, and he looked like <laughs> West Side Gun to him. What bro. year was this? Man, what year was that? Maybe twenty seventeen. Maybe mm, mm, it was right mm. before the kind of the Griselda wave started to take off. Mm, I'm like, okay, random. Yeah, Chicago, cool. one of them cities, man. It, 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 Chicago, one of them cities, you probably would see somebody walking around and wouldn't even suspect it because everybody just looks so unassuming. Mm. Like in New York, you'd be like, oh, I'm in New York. Yeah, I could see that being him in Chicago. You'd be like, nah, it couldn't have been. <laughs> <laughs> this was 2019, my bad. 2019, nice. Yep. Uh, action-packed episode coming up, guys. We got an update on the Dolph trial. Somebody's already been sentenced. We're gonna tell you how that went down. Kanye's back with a new album, and he shared a clip sounding real old school Kanye-ish. We're gonna talk about that, mm. man. See if Oye is back. Ti and Boosie go in on their sons on social media, and Candace Owens made a bold claim about who invented gangster rap. But first. Your man's Fabio Foreign. We're kicking it off with Fabio. I haven't talked about him in a minute. That drill, New York shit, done kind of <laughs> kind of cool off of a little now. bit. <laughs> um, uh, but Fabio made a bold prediction on uh social media. One they kind of echoed a little bit of what you said. He might have bit a little bit of, of what you predicted, but he said that Kendrick will bring out Lil Wayne at the Super Bowl, and then Lil Wayne will then bring out Drake. Uh, he got roasted online for this, but <laughs> let's go ahead and place our bets now. What percentage chance do you see this scenario actually happening? There is about a 13% chance that he'll bring Lil Wayne out now since all the backlash and stuff that has happened. I know I did say that, but I'm backing off that stance. There is a, there's a, there's a chance, but it's not likely. Um, 
the second part of this and he brings Drake out, absolutely 0.00% will never fucking happen, bro. <laughs> you better off seeing an alien, Bigfoot, Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, any one of those people before you see Kendrick Lamar and Drake on stage, especially if Wayne got to come out there first. I know that I said that when we were talking about it, I being very like hypothetical as far as like them ending it and Kendrick bringing Drake out and it would probably want to be, be one of the biggest moments ever in hip hop history. Fact, it would. But I don't think, yeah, that, that it would be that, but yeah. I don't think they there yet. And I think if it does happen, then they're not including Lil Wayne in this. Um, mm. Unless they, unless they making it like Lil Wayne is some type of minister Farrakhan for the new generation and he can get these niggas to squash their beef. I don't see like Wayne extending a hand out to each one of these guys to be like, let's squash this here to be big. And plus I don't think either one of them ready for that. Like there's a genuine dislike that Kendrick has for Drake as we suspected through the music. And though they may make up at some point in time, it's not going to be on Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. I'm leaning there's a I'm gonna go ten percent chance that Wayne comes out simply because of it being New Orleans and he did say that he wanted to be on that stage, although he he spoke to more wanting to be a headliner. He may take this as a consolation prize. And then it's 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 one thing to be feel a certain type of way. You didn't get it, you know, you didn't get the headline. But when somebody calls you like, hey, bro, you want to come out to this Super Bowl performer? Like that's really hard to turn down. I know there's a lot of politics surrounding it, obviously, with his relationship with Drake. So that may be the uh, determining factor where he does say no. But that's going to be very interesting. That 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 young money brunch <laughs> will be very mm. interesting the following year if he accepts that invite. And I think, shout out to my guy, the only way he does accept the invite is if he can bring Drake out. But here's the thing, though. Because I'm with you. Matter of fact, there might be a negative 10% chance that Drake comes out. You're better off seeing there's a greater possibility that Tupac comes out than Drake at the Kendrick Lamar <laughs> halftime show. No bullshit. Diddy. Diddy. <laughs> there's a better chance that Diddy comes out, dude. <laughs> uh, anybody but Drake. Because number one, Damn. why would Drake do that? But more importantly, why would Kendrick do that? Like Kendrick has no incentive to bring out Drake and squash the beat. What for what? There's no, uh, that wouldn't make any, to me, that wouldn't make any sense unless they're going to announce the collab tour and it's a billion dollars into his pocket. That's the only thing I can think of outside of that. What's the point? And why would I do that? If I'm Kendrick, somebody would have to sell me on that. That don't make sense. I, I tell you what, AB. Uh oh. If I were super petty and I'm Kendrick, and Wayne, like you said, if Wayne did ask me, he was like, I got to bring Drake out, bro. Hesitantly, I'd be like, okay. But guess what the first song after that Drake and Wayne set is up? The first song, Mustard on the Beat, ho. Dun, 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 like a whole over the stage for the rest of the, that's how petty I would be. Like the whole, like, hey, I'm, I'm doing not like us until they take me, they, they got to drag me out of there. Like I did, that was, that was the only way that I would do it. I would be that petty. Yeah, he can come out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do the song. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, Let me see the yeah, set cool. list. I right, here go the set yeah, list. Okay, yeah, now nah, here you cool. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go do y'all thing, man. Young Money Days, absolutely. Why am Why am CMB, nigga? Whatever. As soon as the soon as the the lights go out on them niggas' performance, nigga, I'm cranking that with mustard coming out and niggas crip walking up and down the fifty yard line. Like it's, I'm, that's I'm, just I'm what telling you be. right now, I only have a 20% chance that he performs that song. I think people, I think you people that are saying that are insane. That's 20%. the reason that he, that's the reason that he's there. And it would be a disappointment if he does not perform that song. We've already forgotten about it. We won't care. No, we haven't. <laughs> we still see this nigga doing it 10 times in a row on Amazon. We, Amazon. We won't care. Nigga. Not YouTube. Nope, it wasn't on Hulu. It went on ABC Plus. It went on BET Plus. This was Amazon, nigga. We won't care. I promise. Man, that's going to happen. Even the, at least the instrumental. If the instrumental don't happen, I'd be shocked. Well, the, okay, you the don't instrumental get maybe no resemblance. You gonna have some semblance of that song. Now, he may not do the words. He's not gonna do the words. I ain't gonna leave you no out. I know how you like to do. 
there will be like there there's going to be some not like us whether it just be an instrumental or some a, a bar some of that shit is going to get played mm. at at the some most you're going to get a little chord a couple of chords from the instrumental they not i don't know what's what bars he can say off of there honestly not I'd for the nfl the NFL ain't going. Not fuck them up. Dun, dun, dun. Not fuck them up. No. Yeah. No. God, do your stuff. No. <laughs> <laughs> ain't you tired? And then hit and the whole crowd hit the A minor. The whole crowd will have no idea who's on stage, much less the words to that damn song. That's going to ruin your mans. But y'all let us know, man. Can Kendrick Lamar perform a couple of bars of the Not Like Us at the Super Bowl? Also, you think Drake? Well, Wayne will come out. Let us know, man, in the YouTube comments, wherever you get in contact with the show. Next, A.B. Trader Truth was doing an interview, I think it was with Breakfast Club. Mm. And he says the fall off from J. Cole, who he's recently been collab with on that. I might delete this later. And Trey, uh, it was Trader Truth and Is Beyond or whatever it was. Abiza? Yeah, Abizu. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I ain't as cultured as you today. Shit. But <laughs> Trader Truth and Abizu was on J. Cole's uh, Might Delete This Later album. This is where Trader Truth was talking about J. Cole, how it even came up. And Trader Truth says that fall off album may be is going to shock people. Mm. What do you think he means by that? I don't know when or how Cole and Trader Truth got cool. Um, I believe Cole was in Houston riding bikes with him. And I remember Trader Truth came out during... Um, during the beef and said that Cole didn't duck any smoke or whatever. He did what was right for him and all that. So he's been, he's been kind of in Cole's corner for the last couple of months slash year and some change. I'm not sure when they got cool, but shout out to them. Um, I don't know exactly what he means by this, because what would be shocking about a J Cole album that he hasn't already done? Like I, He's been on he's been on the killing spree for the last couple of years with the features. We already know that. Um hopefully he's not anywhere near the production. That would shock me. If he's back behind the boards, that would be shocking in a bad way. I don't want that. I want to be pleasantly shocked. Um so other than him rapping his ass off, what are you talking about? He couldn't have leveled that up. I <laughs> where do you go from where he at currently? Like I, I don't see that happening. Not a big leap. Cole is like the iPhone 15 going to the 16. They're like, nigga, they changed two features, dude. Like, they, it ain't too much you can do. Oh, wow. Uh, the emojis are different. Oh, oh yeah, that's oh, right. Wow. We can react now with, with different emojis. Okay. And I fuck with that. But I mean, like, okay. Like, nigga, is that worth the 1500 nigga, for the phone? Like, probably not. So I don't know exactly what it means by this. If I had to take a wild guess. There may be a difference. He may be experimenting with some different sounds. I have no fucking oh my clue God, what Trader Truth is talking about. I don't know, man. I want to hear J. Cole with different sounds. Like I want to hear Macklemore on a new track. Like, no, J. Cole, we know your pocket. The lane is there. It, your career is damn near at the end. You're in the twilight of it. Just continue doing what you've done. Now, I agree with you, A.B., when we're talking about the shock. Like, there is no shock that comes with this album because we all know that J. Cole can rap his ass off. Yeah. The shock for us came as fans when he bowed out of this beef. And again, that's up to you, my nigga. You wanted to do that, that's fine. If you did what was best for your family, your career, your longevity, your mindset, that's perfectly fine. But the only thing that would surprise people now is you came out with visceral against the niggas who was going against you. J. Cole, or excuse me, Kendrick Lamar and Drake. And you was like, y'all niggas have me fucked up. That's the only thing that would surprise me about this album. And I see that as less, it's less a chance of that happening than Drake coming out of the Super Bowl. Mm. Like there, there is more possibility than Drake comes out of the Super Bowl than, than Cole is like, man, fuck both of y'all niggas. I'm the best. That'd be crazy. He's still going to be talking about the best and being the best and we like we okay we get it j cole but you're not um so the, the, that's the only thing it, like i would be texting you a b and the group chat at 12:08 a.m if there is a song that comes out on the, the fall off and he's like absolutely ethering niggas i would be shocked that'll be crazy. i would be shocked <laughs> i would be shocked yeah that wouldn't add up that wouldn't again that wouldn't that would make everything he said about the Kendrick beef null and void. His whole exactly. reasoning for staying out of that. 
If he exactly. came back and had ether for Drake and Kendrick, nigga, I'm number one. Fuck both of y'all niggas. Fuck your bitch. Fuck your dad. <laughs> that would be, it'd be like, nigga, what? You could have done this and, and, a month ago, dude. Fact. And that's the gift and the curse for what we had with Cole. Like, no one is saying that he's a bad rapper. Like, no one is saying that anymore. Clearly not. But what people are saying is like, ah, bro, we just don't believe it. It's cool. Like, the collard green plate verse, he was ripping that. But yeah, it ain't sure. like he was ripping that a year ago before all this shit happened with him, Drake, and Kendrick. Yeah. Like, it would have been different ripping it like that a year ago. We still would have been like, hey, he might be number one. He might have the best bars. But now... Since everything has transpired, it's like, okay, you're permanently at three, bro. So it's cool. <laughs> Every Everything you're doing is cool. Like, we love it, but, yeah, nothing's going to shock. There's no shock value to J. Cole's music anymore. Yeah, I, I, listen, we're more likely to get a folding clothes part two than uh, <laughs> what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. He, he probably even more washed now, dude. <laughs> we might... We can rap about his man cave. That's what I'm saying, which I might not even mind hearing, but I'm just saying it's not going to be the I fucking. knocking you. Yeah, it, it, it ain't going to be that tape, that ether, though. We know that. Um, That would be crazy, though. You want to talk about a. a, a yeah, you talking about shocked. I would be <laughs> shocked. Like, I would literally, like, I would be listening to that jaw on the floor pause. Like, <laughs> nigga, yeah, fucking right. Yeah. All uh, right. Next up, man. T.I. and Boosie. I guess they've reconnected remember they had a falling out for about five minutes yeah they squashed it they squashed oh, okay that. good 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 mm -hmm. good i got well, nobody want to see they too old and got too much money for that shit Thanks. um so their sons are making music together tootie raw which is boosie's son and of course king harris who was ti's son they're cool they were seen shooting a music video both dads were in attendance and they had to pull their parent card um mm. <laughs> why did this make me think of bill simmons when he do parent corner and what of his parent corner? Let's see him talking to his son about having guns in the video. I just thought that would be funny. Uh, <laughs> that would be funny. If you listen to that Bill Simmons, hilarious. that yeah, would be exactly, fucking yeah. hilarious. Um, but anyway, uh, they had guns in the video, and T.I. and Boosie were like, why do y'all got guns in the video? T.I. specifically was talking to King. Um, is this fair or foul, given who their parents are? Well, it's a fine line right here, boy. And towing it too, boy. Ooh, we nigga. All it takes is for Tootie Raw or King just to know their dad is history. If they knew their dad is like we knew their dad is, they would have been bucking to the highest bucktivity that you could buck. Yeah. Like I, I just say that. Have you seen this DVD? When you say you see a, you You're see just, a twenty nigga on pussy nigga. You just pulled the phone like, up, dude. Right, like bro. Have you seen the YouTube? Like I, I seen it. I seeked it, nigga. I, I know what you niggas was doing on the DVDs, T.I. and Boosie, but I do get it. Even though I'm not a father, I don't have kids, I understand you want better for your kids. And this is one of those scenarios where we always talk about, shout out to another week on the books, where we talk about stuff like this, and it's like, well, a lot of the stuff that we did in our childhood is because we didn't have people like this who were well-respected and could also deliver the message to us where we should get it. Because y'all, I'm not looking at you like you some lame. Like they shouldn't. They should be smart enough to know that they daddies are cool. Like name yeah. some lame niggas out here just like preaching to the like, choir. Like these is niggas that actually experienced it. So they can't never be like, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know if the police came up and we had drugs and we were just shooting a video that yeah, there's somebody going to jail, nigga. Because these are real guns and you're not supposed to have them while you're doing this video, especially with drugs right here, which is what Ti. And Boosie was trying to tell him. And I like one of the things that Boosie was saying in the video and talking to the one of the guys that was hanging around his son. Like, bro, I've been seeing you around a lot lately. I ain't even met you yet, nigga. Mm. Like, it's, it's, about, it's about time me and you sit down and talk because I you, you've you been with my son way too much. And I really wasn't seeing this before you was around. Now you around and they got guns in the videos and drugs. Me and you got to sit down. I loved that part of it. But... It did come off as slightly hypocritical because of what T.I. and Boosie built their careers off of. However, I'm not knocking them for it. I more so appreciate them being in their father bags and being like, yeah, nigga, you don't have to be like me. I did all of that and made this money, nigga, so y'all could be little rich kids. And if y'all want to be rappers, that's fine. But be real, authentic rappers like your brother. Uh, what's his name? Demonic. Oh, I can't think of 
Damani or like your other brother that does the folk country. Like you ain't got no reason to be out here with the choppers and shit, bro. There's just no reason for it. Tootie or King. Like, so I, I did appreciate them pointing out the obvious and saying, y'all niggas, we, we did this because we lived through it. And it was a part of what we grew up on. Y'all niggas are doing this because y'all think it's cool. And that's not cool. So I did respect them for at least stepping up and saying that and not just looking at it. I will say this. I think that there is a line and it's, it's, woo, it's razor thin, <laughs> but I, I side with Boosie and T.I. in this way. T.I. was saying, fam, the, the manner in which you're acting and the lifestyle that you're portraying is false. You don't even have a gun permit. You don't like, bro, like this, this is not the life you live in. You got money. I got money. Our house is huge. It's got a pool in the back. Like that's the difference. T.I. didn't have the T.I. and Boosie, to my knowledge, didn't grow up with money <laughs> and rich parents. And they weren't putting on purposefully for a facade. I don't believe so. At least that's from from the outside looking in. And there no one has ever claimed either one of them was doing that. That's the difference. And so someone could say it's very easy to go, oh, man, look at listen to the stuff that you used to say. Yes, the difference is there was no resistance on my end. This is why your parent, this is why having parents present is huge, especially mm -hmm. dads with boys, because you need yes. the resistance. Everything I, we, I, we just talked about this with the with the Dolph trial. Him getting some money to kill another nigga so that he could buy his daughter something for her birthday, he thought that was a good idea. There was no one there to tell him, hey, fam, <laughs> the reason what you're doing to get your daughter something nice for her birthday will cause you to never see her again in life. <laughs> like, so yes. you might want to rethink that there was no resistance. And I feel like that happens far too many times. There's nobody around to go, are you sure that's a good idea? And that's all T.I. and Boosie were saying. Hey, are you sure this is a good idea? Cause y'all ain't really this. Y'all not really on that type of shit right here. Y'all look crazy right now. Can't can't y'all talk about love? Don't y'all love some muffins, some hoes or something? Like, well, talk about <laughs> something nice. You know, what do you like? You don't have to feed into that because you're following a crowd. You're following a trend, and you you're not being authentic and it's corny. That's really what they were saying, and that's really what everybody watching thinks. It's corny. Be authentic. You don't have to be that because we were that, but we actually were that, and y'all ain't got to grow up in that. So, yeah, and we made we were that, so you guys wouldn't have to be that. So you That's could be doing folk things. music with a fucking yeah, nigga. guitar, acoustic guitar, and a beanie on. Dude, go do that. I saw, bro, I saw Ti son, Ti son at a fucking dive bar where like, oh, yeah, you, you know, there was me, no yeah. security. Like niggas wouldn't like King wouldn't even go for that, and. One of the most important things that you said that I, I loved about this video and how they approached it is we not even trying to embarrass you. No. Like I'm not out here like on some like smacking niggas up, like yeah, watch no. what your little ass doing with the gun. Like most of the clip was me educating you, okay? Like, do you understand what's going to happen Yo. when the police, because you putting this on IG Live and you're putting it on all these places, do you know what's going to happen we'll come with when that. they pull up and y'all got these guns? Yep. Do you understand that you got drugs? He got drugs. Do you understand like how many years and what that come with? Do you understand that it's got to be a nigga out here that's going to have to take this charge? You're going to have to pay his books now. Like you, you in this whole cycle of shit that you ain't got to be in because you want to flash a gun in a video. I ain't coming at you as your dad telling you, oh, nigga, I raised you better than this. I'm coming at you as someone who's been in this lifestyle, has the experience and telling you like, look, this this what's going to come with it. We've heard Jeezy talk about nigga when I went to jail with all of them people in uh wherever he was at I think it was Florida or whatever in the Cali it was in Cali yeah, Cali yeah. I I lost millions of dollars Fighting cases yep like this it's so yeah like I, I love that they came at them like okay y'all want to be grown men I'm gonna talk to you like a grown man I I really liked it I forgot who said this in the group chat so I'm not gonna take credit for it but somebody said T I got to look at all his other sons. And then look at King and wonder what he did wrong, and him. be like, "Where did I go wrong?" He has to think that. And I don't remember who said that, but that that was yeah, spot on. said it. Shout out to him. He has but, I mean, to feel that way. King has said it though. King has said he didn't grow up at the house. Like this is Obviously. what happens when yeah you know, he was like, I, 
I was over there. Like his, oh, his whole thing house. was, yeah, I grew up at my grandmama's house. I wasn't at the big fancy house five days a week. I was over at my grandma's house in the, in the in the hood or whatever that that's worth. It's a cool story, bro. <laughs> you chose, you even chose to do that still. That's nuts. That's not a flex, bro. I don't want to stay over here with the PS5s and the 70 inch screens and the pool in the, in the pool. backyard. I want to go over Granny House with, I can hang. Come on, bro. But I know how that is, though. I've done that. I've done that. So, so I know how that is, bro. Next, AB, before we get to our wins and our losses, a couple more quick hits that we have. Yo, girl, Candace oh. Owens. She claims that gangster rap was created by the feds. Yeah. And then Ice Cube came in and he responded to her claim. What do you think about this whole back and forth, A.B.? Yeah, so her let's, let's read her specific tweet. Gangster rap was never black culture. It was created by the feds who preferred deals to homo wait, who preferred deals to homosexual black men in prison and then turned them into artificial celebrities. The goal was to create false idols to destroy black American values. Uh, all right. Ice Cube then came back and said, we called it reality rap. The industry coined it gangster rap. The fans wanted gangster rap and that's what they got. The fans didn't write none of my shit. I'm a real MC. Okay, two parts to this. Number one, Candace isn't the first person to say that gangster rap was manufactured by someone other than the, the artist involved that we see that there was some puppetry involved and some strings being moved and that the acts themselves didn't know it. Ice Cube is coming from the perspective of just the act. Nigga, I'm at in my basement writing this shit, dude, on my way to work or whatever. I'm on my way to work. I'm on my way to school. I'm writing this shit. Nobody had a gun in my head. Nobody got, nobody, no fed, put money in my pocket to do this. What are you talking about? I think she's taking more and what a lot of people feel the conspiracy theory is, is that the prison system and the privatized prison and, and the, the meeting that happened in the 89 or 90, whatever the secret meeting was, that there were people behind the scenes putting money behind this type of messaging to then push it to people to get what you got in, in neighborhoods and destruction and all blah, 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 blah. So where I, I understand Ice Cube's point. He has to know that's not what she was talking about. He has to understand that she wasn't saying the Fed wrote your lyrics. I hope he didn't take that wasn't a takeaway. But to her account that it was created by the Feds themselves and it was kind of orchestrated. They're both she she's reaching, in my opinion, and he's acting clueless like he didn't know what she meant. I'm a real MC, bro. What do you fam? Uh, she wasn't saying George Bush wrote your shit, bro. Like, let's relax. <laughs> That's not what she was saying, fam. <laughs> I believe what she was saying was was a reach, and I believe he missed the mark on his response. But what wh what did you think when you saw this? And what you said, AB, is the problem with interactions like this. It's the problem that we can't take Candace Owens seriously, and That's it's the true. problem that we can't take Ice Cube seriously. Because both of you guys are sitting here acting like you don't know what the other one is talking about, and there's a middle fucking ground that can be discovered and talked about and hashed out as to where you guys can come to agreement and the masses of people that listen to you can be like, oh, okay, I see what you mean. As you said, AB, of course, Ice Cube, nigga, I know that the government didn't write your raps it's like you were fighting against Easy E, and then for Candace Owens, like that may be true, but what is the gain or the benefit? Like, why why are you telling us this? Like, you're you're not telling us this in the sense of, and this is how you fix it, or since this happened, these are the next steps that should be taken. You're pointing out things that black people love, and you love riling up black people, and you're saying, okay, well, this thing that you love. I'm going to shit on it, and now I'm going to get even more engagement, and more people are going to be talking about me and how I'm this race baiter or whatever it may be. So both of them are serving their purposes here, and, and this is the disgusting thing about this time of year, politics, and when people yep. like them get involved, is they're not trying to have real conversations. Like, you pointed it out very easily, A.B., like, both of y'all are being facetious. Both of y'all are acting like assholes to get your point across, and then that's where you lose to people like me and you in the middle. 
where I could see, even though I hate to say it, I could see what Candace Owens is saying, but she's being hyperbolic. I can see what Ice Cube is saying, but he's being ignorant, yeah. acting like he doesn't know what she's talking about. One of them has to take a step towards the middle and be like, okay, I got you. I see what you're saying. However, what do you think about this point? And until we can start having conversations like that with people like Candace Owens and Ice Cube, who are obviously on a different sides of the line, then we're going to continue to be in this like loop of MAGA versus, oh, I'm on the other side. Like, it's just disgusting and nothing happens from it. I would love to, like, I, I'm i still naive enough to believe that Candace Owens and Ice Cube can sit down and have a reasonable conversation. I'm not mad at Joe Buttons when he invited her on to his platform to talk to her. Like, I, I still think that she says things that should be challenged by people who are ingrained in the Black community and not just shoved away or dismissed like, oh, she's this race baiter, but actually addressing the issues that she's talking about and be like, nah, you crazy. And you're saying that makes you sound crazy and actually putting her in her place in their response and being calm enough not to make it a shouting match as to where they're calling her a coon or whatever it may be. I don't, I don't care nothing about that. Yeah. If she's bringing up good points that we should be able to defend as black people when y'all think, oh, we can get her out of the paint, then do that. But don't act oblivious and act like she's just some right. She, she's smart. And I hope that me saying that doesn't take away from how I feel about black people and what people listen to think. Like Candace Owens is smart, regardless of how people want to feel about it. But however, she needs to be challenged by people who have the 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 rep the, the they have the thing in the black community where they can challenge her and people will be like, yeah, yeah, he right too. And now let's have a conversation. But like, like the name calling and acting oblivious to what they're saying, like that's that's done. That's past. We're not gonna get anything accomplished that way. Yeah, it, the the problem with having someone like her on to discuss this stuff is she tells a lot of lies. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. That's why it's so difficult. That's why it's hard to get people like Trump, politics. They lie a lot. Yep. And you can't. Bro, I've seen her say, man, man, she saw something on. She said something. I think she was down here for revolt, and I think it was Killer mm -hmm. Mike and Ti. They was on a panel, and she said something so egregious, and I was just like, yo, you know, we can Google that. Like that's not. <laughs> this isn't 1995 no more. Like we don't have to sit in. Remember, remember we used to debate sports, and we yeah. couldn't remember if a nigga averaged 30 or 25, and niggas was just Thanks. debating whether somebody averaged 30 or 25. We, I got my phone right here, bro. I, we ain't got to debate no more. I can just I look can it up. The season. <laughs> it, it, I, shit, so she throws shit out that may sound good in the moment because she says it with conviction. But nigga, you can just look it up and see that what you're saying is not true. That That's why having her on your platform and to spew whatever it is she's spewing turns a lot of people off because they just, she can deliver the message and sound smart. But if what you're saying is not true, then you're only, you're just going to continue to fool people who don't take the time to Google. Like, like it's, and it's just, it's a waste. This was a wasted um, back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> this is a wasted exchange. My question to you, I know you've heard the theory about the meeting that changed hip hop and, uh, and the yep. privatized prisons. We're like, yo, let's push this so then more people can get locked up. We can make more money. Not saying, I'm not going to ask you, do you think that could have happened? Do you believe that that meeting actually happened the way that people say it happened? Not saying could it have, because I, I think that's fair to be like, yeah, sure, that could have happened. Do, do, so, am, am I saying it's a definitive fact that it did? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Like, I, yes. If, if, if you're telling me the way, again, like you said, not could it have happened, but if I right. think yes, it did happen, no, it didn't, versus the results that we're seeing in 2024 with Young Thug and Dolph and to numerous other cases that we are, I think it definitely did happen. And I think it was executed as well as they could execute it. And now you see the state of the music business where it is today. Like they, they, they can no longer, I do think that we've graduated past that and what would have happened in that meeting and they've maxed that out. And now you see the music business in an influx right now and people wondering what they're going to do next. They've tried to pivot. Like there may have been another meeting with the ladies and this is how we're going to do this propaganda and make the ladies look this type of way. And that's how we're going to push the next phase of this. But yeah, I do. I do think the gangster rap was a a thing that was pushed 
heavily by labels, heavily by corporations, heavily like we've talked about the East and West Coast where I listen to Slow Burn podcast and all of the people were involved was like, bro, no, we never looked at it that way. The media was saying East, West Coast War. They are the ones that made it that way. And of course, these niggas aren't absolved from that. Y'all were participating with the crews and just being what you thought was being, quote unquote, a real nigga at the time. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely think it could have happened. I don't think it happened. I'm going to keep it above. What about you? I, you don't I, think it could have happened? I get it. No, no, so it's, do, you no think, listen. do you think it's coincidence? Anything's possible. Let's be clear. Like, I'm not okay. finna sit here and act oblivious. Like, man, that's, there's, that, there's no way that could. No, it's certainly possible. I just don't. I, I think I think this is an excuse that people give to absolve people who actually are in charge of the conditions of way things are, it absolves them and it puts the blame on people that have nothing to do with it. In, in mm. my opinion, because, because and the, who who are the people that have nothing to do with it? Like the artists. I, I, I think, I think the, the places that they come from have mm. always been shit. And I think if you have poverty, ignorance and low education, then they're going to do shit that people who are broke, low educated and ignorant do. And I think that existed before gangster rap. And so what the question, the better question, shout out to Moneyball, you ask why five times to get to the root of a problem. I think that if you, the, the real question is how did those conditions get to where they were? I think that's the real question, but that takes peeling back layers and it's deep and that's much deeper than rap. And so I, I don't I, if you ask if you ask why five times or why the south side of, of Chicago is the way it is, you're not going to land on because of futures mixtape like I, you're, just, you're not and you're, you're not going to land on N.W.A. You're not going to land on anything entertainment related. I guarantee you I don't I won't have the answer of what you're going to land on, but it ain't going to be that. And I, and, and I, I, I think I think that poor, uneducated and ignorant people will find something to do be poor, uneducated, and ignorant about. You can take gangster rap away. Then they'll just turn on let, menace and they'll be on. Well, let me <laughs> ask you this. Do you, you don't consume the same type of music that you did when you were younger. Would I don't? I'd be correct in that assumption. Like, you don't listen to as much Master P type music. Like, that ain't... That, that ain't that, like, you were real Master heavy. Master P had a balance, too, though. Is there heaven for a gangster... The feds yeah, are watching me. There was a balance, but even those tied into a certain thing. Sure, it was it was like it was he, street rap, gangster shit though. Right? Do you listen to less or more of that now? Uh, it's probably less because there's more op. There's more like Larry Junes. There weren't yeah. really Larry Junes like that for me back then. Like out the way shit. Even if it's minor, be completely honest. Do you do? Have you seen? the mindset that you've had from maybe a 16 and of course growth comes with it as well, but right, bro. just listening to at least listening to less of that music. Do you see things a little bit differently now? I, I don't have, you know, I don't. And I'm, I'm going to be think, real. I think I do. No, that's and I, I, I understand. I why. took the music so seriously. No, that's fair. Like, that shit, that shit meant so much to me, like the hot boys albums or, no limit and what it whatever it may be. And I I listen to that shit religiously every day, Pac, all of that shit. Of course. And, and you're listening to them talk about that. And you almost have that mindset with like, nigga, that's that's how I am. And when yeah. in reality, it's like I have no reason to fucking be like that. No, I, I see that's the thing though. I, I tried, I tried to get into that shit young. I tried yeah. to order the CDs at 13. My mom was like, nigga, stop. I'm like, nice try. <laughs> The doggy styles, the two shorts, the, the the chronics, nigga, no. So she intercepted all of that. So I didn't really get to it till I was about 15. Mm. I kind of understood the difference in reality and, and entertainment. So or you know, exaggerating for entertainment purposes, so to speak. So it didn't really hit the same. Like I listened to I listened gotcha. to P religiously, but I didn't want to be P the street nigga. I wanted to be P the CEO. The I wanted to be Russell Simmons when I listened to all that shit we talking about. You just named. I wanted to be Russell Simmons. Like See, that's, that's a good point that you bring up. That's that's an amazing point that you bring up. It wasn't intercepted for me. So, like, I'm listening to Two Short Cocktails. Right. 
I'm listening like, oh, this nigga, this is the this is the way that he's fucking all the bitches. Right. Well, this is the way that he has money. So yeah, I would love to be that way. Yeah, for sure. Not even having the the insight like we were talking about earlier with the Tian Bushi. So like not having anyone tell you like the oh, resistance. He's, he's exactly yeah. He's everybody exaggerating, that had a resistance. Bro. Exactly. So yeah, that that's interesting. That's a really interesting perspective, I think, from both sides of it. For sure. Uh, next up, my boy Kanye, he's back. Yes, no more vultures <laughs> three. Apparently, the new album is apparently is. Uh, we're gonna take this with a grain of salt because he's he's announced albums that haven't seen the light of day fifteen times. But fuck it, we'll go with it. It's a slow week. Kanye announces the new album, Bully, coming who knows when. He shared a clip of him in the studio on the keyboard chopping up a soul sample. It sounded amazing. I'll go ahead and say it. Is there any chance that the old Kanye is back? Nope. Uh, absolutely know. not. I enjoyed the clip, though. Hey, B, I was rocking with the clip. I'm hard. Like, oh, I'm just doing hard. my job. The, like, nigga, blueprint Kanye back Tough. in the building. Tough. Um, but he didn't gas me up too many times before. Like, nigga, I know you not for come. Like, I I know what you on, bro. Like, you just doing this because you know this is enough that you need to do to get niggas like me who still believe in your greatness to fuck with you. And you, you gonna you gonna dupe me, nigga. You gonna strike me out of the plate, and you ain't gonna give me none of this good shit that you putting in this keyboard. This is just a random when you was properly medicated and was able to do what you needed to do to stay in that, that that box that you was in. No, I don't believe you. I don't believe that you got that many months of you saved up or the people around you to help you add to what would be an amazing album called Bully if we continue to get these clips and this type of soul sample from it. Can he still do it? Absolutely. Is he dedicated enough to do it? Hell no. Do mm. we have the people around him to do it? Hell no. Mm. Like, I, I don't know what the situation with him and Sci High is, but that should be the first phone call that he makes. Let's get <laughs> him on the phone and start writing for this bully album. I would be here for it, but I just don't think that he has the relationships to do it how he needs to do it. Talent is still there. I 100% agree with that. Maybe not even on the rapping scale. Maybe he should do something where he just produces. I think that'll be fire at this stage of his career, especially he, if he had the producing bug and was in that bag and you get the star studded Kanye produced bully album. And I'm showing niggas what I like, what, what I really do. Nah, and we ain't doing no Adidas stuff, no rapping stuff. I'm just putting the, the, the fire out there and got the best rappers on that. We need an album like that for Kanye to solidify his greatness. So would I be hype? If he told me that was happening, he was doing the DJ Khaled style, but I'm doing the beats, I'm picking the spitters, I'm doing the themes of the songs. Oh, my God, nigga, I'll be first in line. I'm listening to that at 12 o'clock when it drops. Do I think it can happen? Absolutely not. He ain't got the focus. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a pipe dream you just laid out, and it, yeah. it would be amazing. If he did the DJ Mustard type. Remember. That would be a night. Like, bro, you talk about that – and. I, I hate to cut you off. I'll let you go. Ooh. But you talk about what we what we've experienced with Drake, with Kendrick, with Cole all this year. Still, still to that point, if if Kanye was put together a week of good press, told niggas about the rollout. Look now, I, I got everybody on this motherfucker. Yeah. And I'm doing all the beats. Nigga, do you know the, the Twitter feed, the reaction that it would be that Saturday, Sunday night, whenever that came out, nigga? That would be hey. the, that would be just as monumental as them niggas' whole beef. And that speaks to how brilliant the Kanye is, but just can't hone it in. Like, hey, he could listen, do that. that I, I'm not going to lie. He could sneak the MVP award in for 2024 if he yeah, pulled that off. He might, he might could sneak it in. If, Listen if to he, me. Dude, if he did the DJ Mustard, DJ Khaled, I'm making all the shit. It's the chopped up soul sample shit. And he got like Griselda over here. And God damn, he got. I got Dom over here, 2 Chains. No, I got fucking everybody that Ross is on this motherfucker. You got the J-verse. <laughs> a hove on here, nigga. What? Hey, are you serious? That 
Now that would break the internet. And of course, with all that being said, it will never fucking happen. <laughs> Y'all can get that up now. It's like winning the lottery. Like thinking about mm-hmm. that is like thinking about what you would do if you hit the lottery. People are like, nigga, oh, man, nigga, I'm traveling, nigga, I'm copping the big dog rolls, nigga. No, nigga, you're not winning. <laughs> you're not copying none of that shit <laughs> off of that, at least. And so you can cancel Christmas. Um, but it, and uh, yes, the clip was fire, and it shows you that in some way, shape, form, or fashion, the old Kanye is still stuck in there. Remember in Get Out, <laughs> where they had the yeah, blank face, but you chill. could still see the nigga was in inside. Like yeah, he was floating. <laughs> You try to reach up, nigga, to reach back. <laughs> that nigga's still in there, dude. The sunken place. Mm-hmm. He's still in there floating around because that shit sounded fire. His last couple of projects, they're trending in the wrong direction. Vultures 1 was okay. Vultures 2 was some slaw. I ain't going to lie to you. Mm-hmm. I just don't know. I, I can't see him focused enough to do 15 tracks like that. I just he, He's done nothing to prove that he can do that. He might have felt like that for two days, 48 hours. If you can get him 48 hours to bang out 10 of those, then maybe. But you already know, bro, he going to switch the vibe up, nigga. And the next day, he ain't going to feel like doing that shit. It's rock shit. He going to feel like doing some rock shit. Somebody going to make gonna... him mad at, at Adidas or some, some bullshit. Gothic gonna shit, bro. He going to, it's, it's, yeah. that's going to blow it, man. So while it's fun to see him still do that every once in a while, it's a tease. And stop doing that, man. Stop playing with my emotions, please. That's why you need grounded people around you, bro. Like, yeah. if there was just one, like, it was a nigga that was like, hey, look, bro, we're going to go back to the shot. Because I get it being in the shot now. We're going to go back to the shot. We're going to rent the hotel room downtown. Facts. We're going to hit the blocks. Like, we're going to go on, we're going to get on the train. We're go ride, ride through the old block. We're going to <laughs> no, get us some Harold's. Nigga with the soggy, the Harold's was fire, by the way. A little salt yeah, nigga man. dipped in the sauce. Nigga, the soggy, nasty fries. Go we get some do deep that. dish nigga, pizza, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah, you, all, I just need three days. Three days, bro. That's it. That's all we need. Three days. Nigga, like I yourself. Write like, all your shit, dude. You heard yeah, eat. like, exactly. Like, you're up in the room doing five beats a day, like three summers, nigga. That's a different world, like three summers. <laughs> Come on, bro. That's what we need. God, that that'll solidify him. Like that, that that'll put that that'll give him a token in the chip for being like in the game for being like nigga. I'm the greatest ever. Niggas amidst all the Yeezys and shit that niggas that may not have like been as open minded to my music is like I come back at this day and age after niggas thought that I was gone and I put together like a banger with niggas on there just spitting like a chronic. Yeah. Like if he did like a chronic. Like a chronic. Because he can still rap on there. I ain't even tripping. As long as he got Vic yeah, Mensa or somebody Few and far it. between. Few and far yeah. between. There you go. No, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take that. Like, I just need to hear your influence, nigga. There I don't even go. need to hear you rap. I just want to hear your influence on the game. God, that'll be crazy. Man, I right. That. right. Hey, B, uh, we have the Dolph trial that's going on in Shelby County in Tennessee, which is Memphis. First suspect of this trial laid out his case. He got life. Quick. Everything that you've seen so far, what do you think about this trial? A quick L. He got found guilty of first degree murder, conspiracy to commit first degree murder, and fell in, in possession of a firearm. They gave him life immediately. Didn't he waste no time? Uh, the quickest, some quick work. Bro, <laughs> I, I, I know this isn't going to be a message to other people. I know it's not, unfortunately. He's not the first person to get life for murder. He won't be the last. But you hope that somebody somewhere was thinking about doing some dumb shit and sees this and go, man, you know what? This shit ain't even well, fuck that. Never mind. But I'll take just mm. just one. I'll take one, man. Like uh, just save one motherfucker from doing something stupid. This, when you look at it and stand back and just look at it in whole. This was stupid as fuck, bro. Nigga gassed you up, said he was going to pay you something, probably had no intentions of doing it. You know, killed the nigga that was a boss, that was getting money the right way, that was teaching principals and getting money the right way. Yeah, he might have been antagonizing. He might have been showboating a little bit. But, bro, he was was a father. He was a husband. Well, damn, finna be a husband. Bro, like, I, I... you just, like a real one. We we lost a real one on some bullshit, bro. You took a real nigga out and 
Bro, do you know how slow being locked up is, dude? I know I went to I, I went to prison. I'm not gonna act like I'm nigga, I was yes. on Oz now. Yes, nigga, I do know. That's what I'm saying. The fucking the the I'm I'm in nigga sales and everything. <laughs> nigga, that shit tight as fuck, dude. That like I can't do nothing with that shit, bro. The food, nothing. The food alone is enough to make you want to like I, like Diddy's saying right now. Like I would and again bro. shoot no bell to Diddy. Like the the food alone will make you want to kill yourself. Bro, it's a, like, it's I, a reason. No I, I, I'm not even exaggerating. I believe it. It, it. It's a reason Huff was willing to literally put up damn near everything he owned to get the fuck out of get there. Out. Mm-hmm. Everything, nigga. Like that's what that's what niggas is willing to give up to get out of there, and you're willingly walking in, nigga. Like, what are y'all, man? Niggas is ill. I, I, I just, I hope somebody saw it somewhere, bro, and just was like, man, you know what? I'm a hold up. I was gonna run this caper, man. I'm a hold up. And if, and if if that helps, then then so be it. I feel you, AB. But when niggas are starving, they starving, man. I know, I know. That's the, that's the sad thing about this. Like niggas gonna see this and they gonna say he did it wrong. What niggas have said all through. You took the words right out of wrong. my mouth. What niggas have said all throughout history. Oh man, he ain't do it right. I could have got away with that shit, nigga. Famous last and, words, nigga. Yep. And then that's when you sitting there, there like facing everything that you like. This is a sad story all the way around. And I heard some, like, one of the most introspective things that I heard from a fan of Dolph, and I believe this. It was like, man, if if them niggas, and this is far-fetched, I know, I know, living in a fantasy world, but crazy thing is, if them niggas had just approached Dolph and been like, man, you know what, bro, I'm fucked up. Nigga put a hundred K on your head, nigga. I'm just trying to buy a gift for my daughter for her for her birthday, bro. Like yeah. I don't, I don't want to kill you. I know what you mean to people. Like Dolph would have fuck around and hit that nigga off with about fifty racks. You never. And know, that's bro. more than the eight hundred. That's more than the eight hundred that he got for actually killing him, bro. And that's it. That made me. I'm. I may be being naive just based off Dolph music and who we thought he was. However, and I'll say the same thing with Nip. Like, if, if the nigga who had that problem had just been like, hey, man, this is a situation I'm in, bro. Like, I, I'm doing this because my back against the wall, nigga. My daughter birthday today. Or, and I like, ain't got niggas, nothing. Nigga, I ain't got nothing, bro. Here, nigga, here go a rack. Yo. Here go two, three racks, nigga. It's more than the 800 you gonna get for killing me, nigga. Go ball out, nigga. And if you need some more, call me. And not just because you threatened to kill me because I don't want to see you out here like that and I got it. Like, if, if you let them niggas, basing on what the songs and all we thought, the, the Dolph thought about God and his brother, if you let them niggas manipulate you into killing me for what you think is going to be 100 racks, now nah, I got you. Yeah. And I know that's that 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 that's a fantasy world. That's not what we come from. I get it. That's crazy to think or say, but it could have happened. It could have been something that happened, and it could have been ended a, a lot less messy. I know we we real quick before we move on, get to these quick. I mean, get to these wins and losses. I know a lot of people talk about the the quote unquote damage that the gangster rap has done on influencing youth and this, that, and the third. I, I've heard that a million times. If you take rap away, and I know this is a tragic situation in 2024 or 2023 when it's happened, where is Yo Gotti, Dolph, and Big Jook if rap never existed, bro? Do they do either one of do any one of them make it to 2024 if we keep it in a band? Oh, Where's Key Glock a- without rap, bro? Damn, that's a good question. Like, them niggas not making it to 2024. Knowing, and, and we know how Memphis is. Like, we're not that's what I'm on saying. them as people, but like just Memphis as a. Yeah, not them. Type it, place it's, that it is. Uh, uh, yeah, you're right. I'm glad you pointed that out. I'm talking about where these niggas is from. Yeah. Nigga, that shit is the trenches, bro. These niggas are either mm-hmm. dead or locked up. The, I'm talking about it's a high prior. It, it is a high probability, bro. Yeah, because he's not no like school niggas. He's not no like I'm staying out the way niggas. These is niggas that was in. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm I'm participating. They were outside. Yeah. So I get that. I get 
somewhat the damn oh, man, the damage this, the damage that man. It's so sad. Look what gangster rap has come to. They killed Dolph, bro. Are we sure Dolph would even been here, bro? Like, are we sure? I don't know, man. I, I, I'm I'm just saying it's something to think about, dude. <laughs> Niggas die every day. Wait, wait, wait. What, when what you do people say, say that, wait, 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 wait. Step back though, because I I want you it to be clear what you're saying when you say that about Dolph. Like when you say would he have even been here, you're not saying that he was ignorant and was gonna be like engulfed by the street life. What what are you I, saying? I I'm saying he obviously was successful. He done sleep, he done hustled his way up to a big dog twenty million dollar deal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm saying if rap never existed, does he hustle his way up to a twenty million dollar deal in some other industry? Or is he what, selling what? selling green in the hood like his raps talk about? Thank you. Or is he dead by someone killing him for eight hundred dollars? Except this time it was a sack. But that's the sad thing. Of, that's the the saddest that's thing about this story is it ended up the same either way. True, but at least he made an impact, and at least, bro, he bought a house every birthday for his kids. You want to know who not going to succumb to that same shit as kids. So I, I get it. Yeah, hopefully. See, you're right. Hopefully. We see T.I. So. <laughs> hopefully. His, 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 his girl seemed like she got shit taken care of. Oh, but that's good. That's good. At least, at least the next generation, there's a higher probability of them being successful outside of that than passing the, than just the same thing happening in your whole family tree being stuck in the same cycle. He at least was able to break the cycle. That's all I'm saying. Does he break the cycle without rap? No. The odds are against him, bro. So, yeah, sure. anyway, uh, last thing, man, real quick before we get to these wins and losses. October, it is October 1st, we're recording this. OVO has apparently made the news in an odd way. Drake on Instagram has unfollowed several people. Um, yeah. the most notable Kendrick, which um, who knew he was still following him? Number one, uh, that's kind of weird. LeBron, his man's Playboy Cardi, someone he's collabed with, Rick Ross, a <laughs> couple other people, man. And niggas was making lists about this shit online. Is a big deal, little deal, or no deal? Who who makes this news? This is some slaw. This this is like thank you. I'm not even gonna be mad at Drake for this. Like I I ain't mad at Drake for saying, oh you paired you or fought like. If you want to follow a nigga, that's fine. But the people that are reporting on it and making it news to Drake Nasty. and follows Kendrick, like, this is disgusting. Nasty. This is disgusting. Like, I I don't care, bro. The, like, he should unfollow Kendrick. I would unfollow Kendrick, too, if, if if that nigga did the same thing to me, Pauls. Like, I, would, I wouldn't follow him 100%. I don't know about the LeBron playboy... I could see the Rick Ross. I 100 percent see that Rick Ross trying to be funny, nigga. Like, right. When you see me, you are gonna see me. That's that. That's the shit that I would be on with Rick Ross if I was Drake. But I don't care of the people that he's unfollowing. It it it, it really makes this shit seem so chatty patty. Like as Dame was bro. saying, like, bro, this none of this shit we need to know. We don't give a fuck, bro. He can unfollow all the people that he wants to, and I, I'm not gonna look at Drake as any less. I'm judging him by the bars and the songs. Yo, do people have alerts set when people That's unfollow? Crazy. Like, how do you know this? What you did you do? You wake up every day to check their follow list to see if it's the same as it was the day before. I'm conf I don't I don't understand how anybody keep ups with this. It makes zero sense to me. This is the not in, not only is this no deal. This is a dumbass. This is a stupid deal. Like, why <laughs> is it a slow news day, bro? Like, why did, are you tweeting this out? Why is it getting so many retweets? Why is it getting so much attention? I know we're talking about it, but I only wanted to bring this up because how fucking stupid it is. Like, how? <laughs> who keeps up with it? How do you know who will follow somebody unless you manually go in and look and search? Is, it, is there an alert? Like That's what, what I'm saying. Like, what? Nigga, is it like an Amber Alert, nigga, when somebody unfollows somebody else famous? Like, I'm confused. Well, what are you talking about? Like, that, <laughs> That's the rap blog Twitter shit that kills me. I, ha I hate that shit. Like, it's so corny, bro, and they make it seem like it's such a big deal. And then everybody, all the short bus people on fucking social media form their opinions about it. It's like, bro, it's the dumbest shit. I hate when this pops up on my timeline. It's corny. Yeah, I, I just don't. really wanted to vent about how stupid this was. I really didn't give a shit about it. No, I agree. I, I don't care who people follow, unfollow. It it does not matter to me, bro. Like, that shit ain't even real life to me. 
So, oh, uh, I see. That's, yeah, it's not real life. There you. I'm glad you said that. It's, it's not, not real, real life, to me, life. Bro. at all. I ain't gonna unfollow a nigga when it automatically it's beef when I see him in the streets. Like, I, I don't, nigga, you gonna follow me? <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> Fuck what I even know that nigga. <laughs> Oh, uh, shit. Let's get to these wins and these losses, man. Uh, the beat, speaking of Kendrick, the beat up Black Air Force Ones that he used for his single, um, Kill the Party, I think it was the name of the song. If we even got a name for the song, that was an official picture from eBay that he got. In case you didn't know, it was an actual listing. Somebody was selling <laughs> Black Air Force Ones. They took the listing down, relisted it, and set the starting bid at 5K. Win or a loss. This is a loss. This is fucking crazy, bro. Like, just like we were talking about with the last topic, bro. I don't care who follows and unfollows. The hype train behind bullshit like this is insane. And we talk about how prices is and inflation and all this shit. Just because Kendrick Lamar used it, my post and from an eBay ad, now I can put the the black dusty Air Force Ones up for five k. Man, get 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 lost, nigga. Please get lost. God. Listen, it's a W, and here's the only reason. It's because it's the world we live in. When you can Disgusting. sue McDonald's for the coffee being too hot and win, you got to do frivolous <laughs> shit like this. You've got all the attention in the world. You had them up for probably $20 before. You're getting a lot of eyes on you. Somebody probably said, hey, man, you know what you should do? You should probably repost them and make them some bands. <laughs> hey, man, fuck it, dude. Like, okay, repost and make them some bands. If they don't sell, put them back up for the dub that you had them for. I got I, it's worth a try. I'm not even gonna hold you. You I remember when niggas you remember when somebody was like um Tom Brady will throw the football in the stands, but it was like his last yeah. touchdown. And then they come back and like, yeah, yo, let me get that for I'll sign, you know, some jerseys for you. And niggas like, nah, nigga, I need a meal. <laughs> it's the same shit, dude. <laughs> it's it's, that just happened with Otani with the 50-50 ball. And what happened? Yeah, yeah. Um, they in court right now. Nigga, nigga claiming he got beat up about it. <laughs> a nigga claim he got beat up and he won't have the auction cut from the dude who took him. So yeah, that, that makes sense. Oh shit! So the nigga who put it on auction ain't this ain't the person who caught it. That's what that's yeah, what somebody said. The, 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 the nigga who caught it claimed that somebody assaulted. Well, he claimed that somebody assaulted him, took it, and then he's the one putting it up on auction, and now it's in court. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a 50-50 ball from nigga. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. I catch that motherfucker Tom Brady talking, nigga. You, hey, you got to kill me. I ain't even gonna... <laughs> hey, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fight. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, like, this ain't even you got it, bro. Like, fuck all of that shit, nigga. Nah, this Mortal Kombat, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> you you finna have to show me that you can real legit hurt me. <laughs> like, you better have a gun in this motherfucker, you know, MMA. Like, nigga, we going like ain't ain't no oh, okay, you got it. Nope. We, we going <laughs> it's to the death, nigga. The fuck you talking about? The Otani 50. Ain't nobody never done 50-50 before. Like, nah, nah nigga. Come on with I'm this, walking bro. out of that bitch immediately. I'm walking out of it immediately <laughs> with my back turned, nigga. I'm facing everybody, nigga. Anybody get close to me, it. kids, nigga, I'm fine on there. It was a nigga that called it. He was 18, and then somebody, like, older fired on him. And, like, I, took him from me. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. If a kid catch it, I might fire on him, bro. Fuck it. I might take him. I might do the same. Definitely. At the very least, giving him the little butt bump to get him out of the way. Like, nah, you ain't getting this, cuz. This 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 life, this is a million dollars for me, nigga. You you a little nigga, nigga. You still got your whole life in front of you. Come on with this. Come on with all that, bro. How <laughs> to work for this, nigga? Hey, <laughs> right, nigga, my. Uh, that's oh, why I'm shoot. here today. I came for this ball, nigga. Hey, what nigga. you talking about? <laughs> Oh shit, nigga might eat. Hey boy, nigga might have to follow uh, me. You know, nigga, I ain't gonna lie, be like, hey, I apologize, my nigga, but hey, man, I, I, I throw you some. You. Yeah, I throw you some. Uh, last one, man. WRL, A Ball and MJG are honored in Memphis with their own intersection. I just fire, man. I, I, yep. About time I tell people all the time, they say I'm biased because I'm from the South. A Ball and MJG need more recognition. Facts. I promise you, Eight Ball is just as good as your favorite rapper. I promise you, he is, nigga. I was listening to the, like, when, when, when niggas talk about story rappers, 
They don't mention eight ball. Like he got my homeboy's girlfriend, time, Mr. Big, uh, in the line of duty. Like eight ball is eight ball is one of them one that's very underappreciated. So man, this is well, well, well deserved as far as them getting their intersection named after them. What's that MJG version? Which one? A nigga that won, nigga. Oh, uh, friend of foe. Woo! So can I? Who so that know what hey. my phone, nigga? Come on, bro. God, <laughs> nigga. Man, they bought them JG so underrated. Yeah, they the shit. They, they one of the most underrated groups ever. Yeah, super dope. Obviously a W, man. Uh, more people need to intersect. I like that's kind of cool though. I like the intersection shit. That's kind of dope. I think Bone got one in Cleveland. Um, I can't remember. I think uh, several other people. Obviously, I just can't think off the top of my head. <laughs> Um, let's get to the on deck of the week. Shout out to the old dog 93. The way y'all were shaking your heads while talking about Dame Dash. LOL. We can tell these guys were hurt seeing the fall of a hip hop hero. Yes, we were hurt. Yes. Still hurt. Devastated. And then Devastated. I, I wish it would be over. I wish it would just yes. <laughs> finish and be just done. Bow out. Just bow right. out, please, bro. Right, damn. Shout out to I appreciate that for the comment though, man. What you got to put me on? Um, I put on this week is an audible book. Also, you can get the physical copy of it. Shout out my guy, Dro. He put me on it. It's the monk who sold his Ferrari. Okay. Uh, this book is really dope in the sense of maybe you weren't taught like how to save for the future or just what to do to make sure that for your exit, the, the rest of your life, you're going to be all right. Maybe you were brought up in a situation where you're taught survival versus Nah, I need to make sure that this, this, that, and the third straight. This book, I'm a couple chapters in right now. This book right here helps you figure out like, nah, this is what I need to be doing to make sure 10, 15, 20 years from now I'm straight. Mm. From all the aspects of it. It's called The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. It's by Robin Shamara. Shamra, S-H-A-R-M-A. Mm. I would advise anybody who's trying to boss up, level up, make sure that their next 20 to 30 years is as good as they want them to be to listen to this. The monk who sold his Ferrari. Now that's hard. That's a dope name, too. Yeah, that is fine. A monk hopping on a Ferrari would look crazy. Oh um, man, that, that makes you want to see what's going on facts. immediately. Like the title was fire. Yeah. 100 percent I'll check that out. Uh Man, my put on is a little bit kind of related to that in a strange way. Um, I'm going to suggest people watch, and I know y'all hate Vlad. I get it. But Oskino <laughs> from State Property has mm -hmm. a Vlad interview that is really good. He tells mm -hmm. his life story. You know how to, if you're familiar with Vlad's, um, if the way he does his interviews, it's, it's linear. So he takes it from the beginning, goes all the way through how he got with Rockefeller and all that. All that is interesting. But the part that stood out to me the most, I didn't know this, but Oskino, Oskino got shot nine times in 1997. Nine times, close range. He's got 16 holes in him from it. And he said when he was laying there, he said he thought he was going to die. He was 18 years old. He said he thought he was going to die. And he was, he was in the streets like heavy, clearly. He said he thought he was going to die so he wasn't really tripping on dying, but the biggest thing he was, he felt sad because he was like, he realized that, damn, I'm finna die and I never got to accomplish anything. Mm. He said, I was, I was laying there sad at the thought of me leaving earth and not having done anything really. I had been hustling this whole time, hadn't done shit that I felt that I was capable of doing. Long story short, he obviously made it out that situation. Two years later, he met Jay, signed a Rockefeller, and the rest is history. I say that to say, man, if niggas laid down tomorrow, do you feel like you have accomplished what you felt like you could have accomplished in your life? Do you think the people are going to talk about you highly like you feel like they should? It's just something to think about. It plays into the long-term uh, thought process of that book you just mentioned. But I thought that was a deep statement by him. And I don't think he meant anything like super deep by it. But the way he said it, I was like, damn. Like, I don't think he that realized what he just said. <laughs> like, he don't. That was deep. So it's just something to think about, man, when you wake up tomorrow. Hopefully everybody listening wakes up tomorrow. But just, hey, did you accomplish what you wanted to accomplish? And if you didn't, what can you do to make that happen? 
Shout out to Skino, though. Check that out. And now that I'm talking about that, I got to go listen to that state property now as well, because that motherfucker slapped. No one that. and two. Both of them. Let's be very clear. Two was fire. Two Max. was fire. <laughs> but one was fire, too, though. Once you it was. To to they Man, both went. Both of them on streaming sites, too. Absolutely. Yeah, to my knowledge. To yeah, I need to listen to both of those. No, that's fire, though. I'm going to check out the... You said it was a lad interview? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a good one. It's a lot of clip. And if you want to just clip it up, go for it. But he, it's, he's got a very interesting story, man. He can probably make a movie out of this shit. Tenfold, man. We appreciate y'all tapping in with us. Make sure y'all rate, subscribe, like, do all the wonderful stuff that you're supposed to do as a podcast supporter. Most importantly, tell a friend. Absolutely, man. Spike Lou. It's your man, Animal Brown. Till the next time, we out. Peace.